welcome to Elegant Country Living at Peacock Ridge Farm. I'm Renee Fry, and I am so glad that you're here. At Peacock Ridge Farm, we love great recipes, entertaining and tablescapes. We love a great room remodel and DIY projects. We love gardening and so much more. So I hope that you will join me at PeacockRidgeFarm.com and on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook at Peacock Ridge Farm. And of course, follow right here on YouTube. Boy, do I have some great things in store for you today. So glad that you're here. Come on in. I absolutely love fall. It is my favorite season. I love cooler weather and boots and sweaters and great recipes that warm me up on a chilly evening. I love just the fall colors, the decorating. I love it all. And boy, do I have a great episode for you today. I am sharing with you how to create an amazing fall garland for your front door. You are really going to love it. It is amazing and it's easy. Then I'm going to show you how to make the best baked potato soup. And it's gluten-free and dairy-free. And it's delicious. Then I'm going to share with you a wonderful cherry crumble that is the perfect dessert for a fall evening. And last but not least, I am sharing a green and white gingham checked fall tablescape. It is going to be a great episode. Come on, let's go. Today I am sharing with you one of my favorite projects ever. I am creating a garland that goes all the way around the front door and it is going to be spectacular. So let's get started. I have this swag which I am going to hang right above the front door. This is going to be my anchor piece. On either side of the front door I am going to hang this eucalyptus. This is going to be kind of my base to start with. It will add greenery and character and then I can build upon this. And then I have all of this amazing stuff. So the first thing that I did was to hang these hooks around the door jam. I did this several days ago to make sure that the adhesion was good and solid before I started to add weight to it. I start by adding a clear hook to my door frame. 
I do it 24 hours ahead of time so that it gets a good adhesion. This is what the hooks look like. I will put six all the way around my front door. chicken wire. This wire happens to be 24 inches wide. I am going to cut it in half so that I have two pieces that are 12 inches wide and I'm going to cut this at seven feet long. Now when you're using chicken wire it is always super smart to use some gloves. Next I have my wire cutters. These are perfect for cutting the chicken wire. Then I have some needle nose pliers. They will cut my florals for me, but the needle nose end will help me to bend the ends of the floral wire to help them to stay in. I have several different florals and pumpkins here that I'm going to show you. I have some green maple leaves. I actually have 12 of these. I am going to divide everything up to where I have some for the top of the garland and then equal amounts for each of the sides. I have some rust colored sunflowers, which are so pretty. I have several kinds of pumpkin picks. What I really like about these one is they have the florals, but they have the stems as well. So it's super easy to poke it into the chicken wire. I have orange pumpkin picks and white pumpkin picks. I have four of each of these. And then I have some smaller green pumpkin picks. I have two of these. I have some of these cute little grapevine pumpkins. I have four of them. I have four of these bouquets that has different kinds of flowers and berries in them. And I have four of these bouquets. And to make sure I have three piles, one for the top of the door and two for the sides of the door. I have 12 of my maple leaves, so I am going to set aside two for the top of the door, and then each side of the door is going to get five. I am going to reserve two of the green pumpkins and two of the grapevine pumpkins for the top of the door, so I'm going to add them to that pile. Now I'm going to put two of the white pumpkins and two of the orange pumpkins on each side of the doors pile. Now I have two of the small green pumpkins and two of the grapevine pumpkins. So one of each is going to go into each pile. So first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and cut my chicken wire. Now I am going to start trimming up my bouquets and start adding them to the piles as well. Now I'm not sure yet if I'm going to be using all of this or not, but at least I have enough that I know I'm going to get a nice and full garland. Now I'm just going to take my chicken wire and I'm going to fold in both ends all the way down.
This does a couple of things. One, it gives it a more of a 3D look to the finished product and the edges are nice and smooth now. And now I'm just going to take it and hook it on screws and on the hooks. Kind of smooth it out a little bit. And now that the hard part is over, it's time for the fun stuff. I am going to start by hanging the swag on the center. And then I will hang the eucalyptus swags. And now I'm getting a good base. And next, I'm going to add the pumpkins. And now I am going to add my filler flowers. Didn't this garland turn out amazing? I absolutely love it. I hope that this has inspired you to create your own work of art as well. And if you do, please be sure to take a picture of it and share it with me on social media. Temperature's cool. I love nothing more than a big pot of homemade soup. And today I am sharing with you one of my favorite recipes ever. It is a baked potato soup. However, I am making it gluten free and dairy free with some amazing twists that are so good that you are really going to love this recipe. What you're going to need is some non-dairy butter, some onion and garlic, chicken stock, I have non-dairy cream cheese, some cooked and crumbled bacon, some non-dairy cheddar cheese, some sweet potato. I like to use a golden sweet potato because it looks just like a Yukon Gold. I also have salt and pepper, some gluten-free flour, and some non-dairy milk. Let's get started. You are really going to love this. I'm absolutely giddy. The first thing that I need to do is to peel and dice my sweet potatoes.
Now that I have put my potatoes peeled and diced, I'm just going to add them to my stock pot. Next, I'm just going to add my flour directly to the potatoes. The reason why I add the flour to the potatoes now is I will stir them up. The potatoes will be nice and coated, but I will not get any lumps in my soup. Next, I'm adding my two cups of milk. And I'm going to give it a quick stir just to make sure that I get that flour well incorporated. Now I'm going to go ahead and add three cups of chicken stock. When I'm at the lake, I try to keep my recipe super simple. I add in my garlic powder and my dried minced onion. And I'm just going to bring that to a boil. And now I'm just going to chop up some fresh chives. I love using chives not only for the flavor, but it adds such a pretty detail. Now that the potatoes are starting to get tender, I am going to turn the burner down to low and I'm going to add in my last ingredients. I'm going to add in my non-dairy cream cheese. my bacon, my cheddar cheese, butter, and salt and pepper. I'm going to give it a good stir and then just let it simmer on the stove for a bit. And that's it. Doesn't this look delightful? And it smells delicious. I can hardly wait to sit down and have a bowl. Today I am making a cherry crumble. This dessert is so easy and so delicious, it is sure to be a hit at your house just like it is at mine. I love this time of year when it's fruit harvest time. I love fruit desserts of any kind, whether it's berry or apple or peaches or pears or cherries, it just doesn't matter. Today for the crumble, you will need these ingredients. I have oats and flour, granulated sugar, brown sugar, cherries, some butter, and some vanilla. Now, if you are gluten-free and dairy-free like I am, I am using Bob's Red Mill one-to-one gluten-free flour and I will be using non-dairy butter. If you are not gluten-free and dairy-free, just go ahead and use the regular cake flour and regular butter. Let's get started.
I am using pitted and frozen cherries. This saves a lot of time and makes it so much easier. I have my cherries in the pot on medium heat. I'm going to go ahead and put a half a tablespoon of cornstarch or arrowroot powder. Arrowroot powder is gluten free. I'm going to add a quarter cup of granulated sugar, a dash of cinnamon, some vanilla extract, and a quarter cup of butter. I'm going to let my cherries cook down, get the juices flowing and start to thicken. This will take about 10 or 15 minutes. While the cherries are cooking, I'm just going to get some butter on my paper towel and go ahead and butter my pie plate. And set that aside. Next, I'm going to get two cups of oats. I prefer the old fashioned oats. I do one cup of the one-to-one -one gluten free flour. A quarter cup of my brown sugar, a dash of cinnamon, and now I will add a half a stick of melted butter, and just give that a good stir. Just until it is well combined. Now that my cherries are cooked and thickened, I'm just going to go ahead and add them to my pie plate. This smells so good. I wish that you could smell it from where you are. And now I will just add my crumble topping to the top. And now I will pop it into the oven for 40 minutes at 350 degrees. And that's it. Doesn't this look amazing? It's going to taste great. Just going to scoop some up in a little compote with a dab of some vanilla ice cream. And there you have it. Super easy, delicious, and your family is really going to love it. I am so excited to share this beautiful gingham check hall tablescape with you. It's one of my favorites. Come on, I'll show you how.
absolute sucker for gam check. Isn't it just beautiful? I started this tablescape with this large scale green gingham check tablecloth and I adore it. Then I topped it with some French country dinner plates and salad plates and I added the matching gingham check cloth napkins. I love the warmth and the fall colors of these cute little dessert plates. Don't you love them? Each one of them has a sweet little pumpkin on it. And if you notice right above them, I have a cupcake holder holding a beautiful little pumpkin. I just love the warmth and inviting colors of the pumpkin dessert plates and the cute little fall pumpkins on the cupcake holders as well. I used my bamboo silverware that is also a similar color that really ties things together and I love it. For the centerpiece, I chose a copper lantern and I filled it with a faux green pumpkin and some glittered eucalyptus. And I love the look. On the other side of the lantern, I used my wire obelisk with some greenery. And I used my favorite vintage silver birds at the base of it. I used my favorite wine goblets and water glasses. Aren't they beautiful? They are a set with beautiful French country flair to them. I hope you have loved this tablescape as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. And I hope you found some inspiration today. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I always enjoy our time together. Please be sure to follow me on my blog at PeacockRidgeFarm.com, on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook at Peacock Ridge Farm, and of course, right here on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to that YouTube channel. Blessings to you.